Um, yeah, we're quite happy. Um, that we have Fechter here from uh, Colbert DB or just Colbert? Colbert. Just Colbert. Mm -hmm. um, and the story is that um, yeah, Colbert is a new database management system, and I'm sure we're going to hear all about it. Um, and I saw this uh, on the internet, and I thought that um, there's not so many people in this country that work on making database management systems. Uh, therefore, we should talk. And uh, usually the academics, the way academics talk to each other, they invite each other for talks, so there you are. All right, okay. all yours. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, first of all, um, I like it to be here, and uh, I also feel uh, honored to be here with you, because you're all um, scientists and experts in the field of data architecture, data analysis. And I like to be here because I have a small company and we developed a database management system with some new functionality, which we think is maybe innovative, uh, powerful and simple, but it's nice to hear from you what you think of it. So that's what I like to hear from you. Now, as I said, I might not be a real scientist in the sense that I never did some thorough investigation on what was already published uh, in this field. Neither did I publish myself in a, I didn't write down my research in a unique and scientific notation. What I did though, do is uh, I wrote uh, hundreds of prototypes. I like uh, prototypes because they give you the ability to play around and playing around you sometimes see similarities in your solution where you didn't expect that and then it gets interesting. What is it that the similarity, what, what does it stand for? Uh, also when you're uh, playing around with your prototype uh, you sometimes uh, feel this is getting too complicated. And most of the time when things get complicated, you didn't find the, in my opinion, the core, the essence of the solution of the problem. So throw it away, uh, as I said, with the most, except one, all of my prototypes, just throw them away, rethink it, uh, try a different angle and uh, start again. Um, this photo, this is also important for me, this is, uh, as you can hear, this is Grandi. These are the famous Kolsaas building, great to see this skull. This is just five minutes bike away from my home, this is where I live, and I like to be here. Uh, this open landscape helped me to, de to develop an open mind, a broad view, and uh, especially when I'm here and I'm doing nothing, not, not thinking about the research, uh, sometimes things pop up new insights. Uh, so you could say my development method is something like throw away prototyping by playing around and doing nothing. And it works for me. So um, enough for this philosophical uh, intro, uh, what brought us. As I said, uh, we've got a, a, a relational database management system with some new functionality. Most important is the ability of executing formulas that are stored in database fields. Uh, we've also uh, developed uh, a domain-specific language, we call it Haddock, and uh, with Haddock you can uh, analyze and mutate uh, strings. Uh, we integrated it in SQL. By the way, SQL, you'll see it right away, uh, we also uh, yeah, change SQL a bit. You can speak normal SQL, but you can also speak a dialect. You you can omit all superfluous redundant SQL elements like to buy or have in, or uh, if you don't need it from, or you don't need uh, to select, just omit it, makes life easier. Um, then we also uh, add an easy way to uh, add functions, even generic functions, but that's more a syntactic issue, we're not, not really scientific at this. Um, we also added uh, the ability to normalize data, to be able to uh, import or uh, access not well-structured data structures as if it were normalized data tables. And we added an, uh, an operator function, uh, former, which gives you the ability to access information from the former record. And with that, you can easily uh, implement all those, some language have those, we call it a window function or an alert function. They've got a lot and the one you need is never there. Uh, <laughs> and with this simple uh, form of function, you can implement it too. So uh, let's see where it uh, leads us because this is a lot. Um, let's start with uh, the uh, ability of uh, 
excreting form that's stored in database fields. Now, there was an actually problem with a client of mine. They had a billing problem. Uh, it was a huge company and the, the problem had to do with uh, billing, with writing invoices. Uh, the actions they performed, you see in, in, in uh, here the structure of the table. There was a client ID, an action ID, an action date, some odd parameters I don't know anything about. And finally, a fee. Now, billing was done straightforward until a certain moment in time, and it had to do with governmental rules. The, the hospital was allowed to charge an additional fee, you can see here, if a certain condition was met. And there were also hundreds of formulas. So, my question to you would be, how would you solve this? Can you solve this in your database? Mm -hmm. uh, would you write a program outside the database? Would you go to a spreadsheet? Um, the so many answers, gentlemen. Come on, this is <laughs> <a> limitation. <laughs> well, now it looks like a projection, no? I mean, you can, you can express it as a... As one big like this, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this was what the IT department came up with. <laughs> uh, this is what they tried, but remember there are hundreds of formulas, mm -hmm. and there was another problem that these formulas uh, they changed over time uh, on an average of three times a week. So the uh, the the, uh, the financial department had to go to the IT department to update this SQL code. And also there was another problem, they also wanted to be to have the opportunity uh, what does a, sp a specific group of formulas with specific task, uh, ta tech uh, contribute to uh, some additional fee. Okay, now uh, I'll show you first how you can solve it in Colbert. I'll show you a quick uh, uh, solution. And after that, I'll go to, into the details and uh, the concept. All right? This is Colbert. I've got my brain thing here. Yeah. Um, and here I have the action ID. I write action, but this is exactly the same as select star from actions. So we omit uh, superfluous things. <coughs> and I also have my table with billing formulas. And here you see the formulas. Now, in Colbert, I can just say actions. What did I say? I don't have it here. Okay, do it by hand. <laughs> uh, I can join these two tables. Again, this is same as select star from action join billing formulas. Now I got, oh yeah, now I know what's the problem about this the solution because I don't have. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you still see, you still see here the formulas, but when you access a formula by name, then it's being calculated. So the solution to our problem is actually give me the client ID, the action ID, and the ac oh, action. Oh, I don't need more than six. Client ID, action ID, and the action date, and give me the bonus. Sorry, not the bonus, additional fee. Oh my god. Uh, fee. Um, no, from this join where condition. And executing is actually give me the result, the wanted result. Not quite, because you see that some formulas, uh, of some actions, uh, have an additional fee due to several uh, formulas. So actually what I have to do is to say, give me the sum of the additional fee. So there you have it. Again, you see, we don't do any group by. I never understand why there's a group by. Maybe you can explain it to me, but <laughs> I omit it. A question of clarification. Yes. In a previous slide, you identified that there are a number of rules. Yes. What are the logic? What is the semantics of the rules? Is it order dependent? Are they independent? Or what determines a correct application of a rule? 
Okay, shall we um, go into that after I okay, explained uh, this? Remember the question, and then we come to that later. This was just uh, mm -hmm. some a quick uh, uh, introduction of how we can solve in Colbert. So now let's go to the concept behind this. Uh, all right? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, um, sorry for, for interrupting yeah. you again, but just for the semantics of this quick. The where condition is similarly for where condition is not null. Sorry again. The where condition. We write where condition. Yes. In this quick. Is it synonym for where condition is not null? No, it's synonym for where condition is true. Condition true. is a formula. Ah, okay, where the evaluation of the formula is true. Okay. Exactly. And this was the table where it comes from. I can, uh, with a shortcut to open a table or execute a SQL statement mm -hmm. uh, which is selected. And here's condition. Mm -hmm. And you see that this condition is uh, a formula that yields a Boolean value. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now about the concept. Uh, we said if this is going to work, we have to define some objective before we uh, implement it. And we said uh, we want no extension of SQL. So we don't want uh, the need for defining a large property set on the data table to uh, the, they serve as parameters. No, we want an executor or an uh, evaluate operator. We also said it must be intuitive in use, so uh, as if it's always been there. Uh, and we said we want a strong type mechanism for formulas because typing helps us to uh, prevent making errors and uh, uh, yeah, that too. Um, and last but not least, we said we want it to be orthogonal in use, and orthogonal means everything fits on everything. Okay. I can tell you we didn't need all our, our objectives. I think it's good to have them. Um, I'll show you. Now let's show. Let's go into the concept. Um, oops, sorry. This is not what I was. Only this one. Um, Let's take a look at the table. This is an employee table with an uh, employee name, birthday, and employee ID. There's also a department ID, I come later to that. And here you see uh, apparently some employees have negotiated a bonus formula. Now, if you look at this, you see right away a problem that are with this column because every column has a type. But what's the type of the bonus formula? Normally, when you have an expression uh, or a function or a method, whatever you call it, the type of that function is defined by the type of the parameters and the type of the result. And here you see there are all kinds of parameters. So we've got a problem. There's one thing you can say about this, and that's that uh, it, make, it does make sense to define the result type. And that's what we did. We introduced a new type, uh, and I've got a table with. Let's open a new tab. I can show you the field types. This is an internal failure, and here you see the normal types: uh, date, date time, double, double is a real each thing, and every type also has a expression rule, expression double, etc. Mm -hmm. And with this one, we uh, this is a new type. So there goes out our objective of not extending SQL. This, this is the only extension we made. Um, we introduced new types. So if I want to define a table like this, I can do it like uh, create a table. Let's call an employee uh, a name which is a string in position H. Uh, no, let's add a salary. Is it the other way around? H that is an int? Or Sorry. does it look like this as well? Yeah, both. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Well, that, that's the nicest thing about having uh, an, um, a relational da a database management system which you build yourself because you can deal with your own shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> I could never remember uh, which came which first. So <laughs> I do it more. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And then we got the bonus, and this bonus, we say, well, what's the type of the bonus? The bonus is expression, oops, uh, let's make it a double. So if I commit this one, it says employee successfully created. I can open it now by this shortcut. 
And now let's add a record. Say John twenty three. And now as the bonus, well, if I add this one, will this commit? No. Because it can't find this array, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, it will commit. Why? Why? <laughs> well, the uh, the compiler tries to compile it, and though it doesn't know anything about the parameters, it says, okay, it might yield, depending on the uh, parameters, it might yield the problem. <laughs> Double. Yeah. Now let's try another one. Let's say Anna is not running that much. And I say X or I. No. Will this commit? Yeah, this won't commit because there will never this will never yield a proper double. So type checking is done twofold, and on entering a formula, it's only checked, is there a possibility that it might yield a proper failure? I can give it a constant integer, and this is uh, because the integer uh, bears an implicit cost to a double. So the, these formulas, they can also refer to columns that are not in the table because they might be joined together with the table later on. Exactly. Sorry, I can't. Well, what's the, what's so it? now this x or y, yeah. it's not in this table. Yes. However, you can still put them in the formulas because you might join this mpo table with another table, and that might have x or y. Columns, exactly. Right? That's the idea. And then at that moment, mm -hmm. we'll see you later on. At that moment, the second part of the type checking is done. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So it's joined to tables when both have the x and y. Yeah. <laughs> What's the type resolution then? For an address, for instance. If I join two tables and yes. both have the x record, uh, you have to do some type resolution then. But we have that page to set on that. Okay, well, well, come to that later too. Yeah. <laughs> Remember your question. It's a good question. We'll come to that. Okay, let's uh, get rid of this and this one too. And here we have our empty table. Now, there's an odd thing about uh, this this column, this formula, because a formula actually has two manifestations, and sometimes we mean the code, and sometimes we mean the value. Actually, it's not that strange, because you're all familiar with it. I mean, if you have a variable, if you say let variable be 10, then you mean the placeholder for the variable, for the value. And if you say uh, variable plus 10, then you mean the reference of the variable. So this is something similar, it's not that strange. Um, and like you're used to that, uh, we said, okay, if you call a formula field by its name, then we mean the executed value. So if I say star from, this is the same as select star from, select is an identity operator, uh, but a relation as an input and an output is the same relation. Uh, but now let's add the bonus. So at this moment, bonuses are to calculate it, and then you see a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, this one you can calculate, but here I've got a param error, meaning there is no revenue, there is no target. But the bonus uh, formulas are calculated at this place. This is the place of implication, and from this place, this is the scope of the variables. Now I can add a, this is normal SQL, I can make it like this, make it more, uh, yeah, maybe easier. Um, I can just like step, say this, so I add a constant field, but I can also say, oh, I name it revenue. So when bonus is calculated now, the concept of the, the scope of parameters, which is so oh, this, <laughs> sorry, this is the scope of the parameters. If I execute this one, you see that some other form, some other formings can be executed. And if I add again, this is not useful, huh? but it's, it's explanatory. I, I guess it's not useful. And if I say, okay, oops. And then I can almost evaluate all bonuses. Now let's make a, this a Boolean value. 
if I execute this, then you can see there are other there are parameter errors and there are syntax types errors. The these types is something like you know you can ask for where bonus is error or where bonus is if I want to know which parameters are missing like this. Now, as I said, this is not very useful. Uh, let's go to the end table again. Uh, how do I use it? Well, imagine I have some sales figures like this table. There's the same employee ID and per year there's a revenue uh, and a target. And now I can easily say, okay, I call my employee, uh, join it with my sales. I make it a natural how to join. Again, I think this is superfluous. This might be a number two. Um, are we already did No, and now I say select star uh, and give me the bonus value. And we almost see. Yeah. And now you see here the calculated bonuses. Now there's something in Colbert that I can other buy that I that I also can uh, add an order here and add a where clause like this. So it's ascending and selected. So it means the orthogonal, everything fits on everything. Okay. Um, now let's go back to our objectives. Uh, we didn't mention them all. We uh, extended SQL with an expression T. Uh, I think it's still intuitive in use. Uh, and the type mechanism is done twofold. First one entering, uh, and it's quite orthogonal. So the concept is we introduce an extra, extra T, twofold type mechanism. The formula name denotes its value and the scope of the parameter is defined by the case of integration. Yeah? Are there still other questions about this, uh, this part so far? Is your question answered? Uh, kind of. Uh, uh, I didn't show it, but mm -hmm. yeah, the, two, the, the two tables you can have. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, I, I forgot the question. Uh, if you have two tables with two same X parameters. And this would be an inertia, it's ambiguous. Or okay, well, normally uh, if you have a table A and B and they both have an X, if you say select whatever star from uh, table A, table B, of course you can enter an alias. If you don't have an alias, uh, search of parameters is going from left to right, so it's the first x from the first table which is uh, taken in that situation okay i have another question you uh, selected a constant in the where clause yeah uh, with a name and the name is normally the relation name right but you use it as a as a field name how does that work <laughs> well, you can um you mean the in your in your first in your example where you had the constants in the uh, oh yeah okay uh, this was the end yeah point. there yeah the target so, target yeah. is now 20,000, Yes, but target in that case actually, in, in that place actually means a table name, so you're resolving that somehow, right? Yeah. No, target is just in the, it's, in the it's just a yeah. field, it's a, it's, a it's a constant field. Oh, it's in the front, sorry, oh, yeah. so it's, it's, it's in front of the word, sorry, the, 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 the sorry. I thought yeah. it was after it, in this yeah. 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 My, my mistake. Uh, okay. Okay, let's go on to uh, our next topic, and that's Haddock. Um, if you have a lot more questions, please uh, feel free to answer. Um, Haddock is uh, our uh, domain-specific language. It's, it's, it's fun to use. Um, Haddock uh, makes a string uh, a set and tuple. So it's a, some kind of final state of the main. Um, if you use the double column operator, it makes a st from a string it makes this set and tuple, the original source, which is a string. There's also a Boolean success. There's the length of the string, the position, the current position of the string. There's a buffer in it uh, from, from and to which you can copy uh, elements from that string. There's a counter and a retrieve counter. 
and that of consists of a lot of one web operation all heavily overloaded so let's go to the header demo here yeah, I have the, the, the obviously I'll do this one here yeah, I've got the table with all commands so and the commands as I said one letter commands uh, and they they uh, repeat parameters so I can erase a character three characters minus four means uh, at least four or more and null or uh, star means uh, as many as you can uh, you've got a ring back a ring right there's also some right with a string which means go right with the next character is in this string or in this range etc etc verify find substitutes um, well I don't expect you to understand them all right away remember them all by the way um, you also got uh, you can move things around in these registers and these triple elements you can quit the header and when quitting you can decide if you want to deliver yield uh, the counter the position etc etc there's also some you can group uh, commands when they are one or other commands and they will uh, yield success or fail as a whole uh, that's important too uh, every command uh, also um, uh, well every command in one way or the other way manipulate those triple elements but if the success permit per, sorry if the success element is wrong then the next commands are not executed this, um, this is a group you can also uh, define a lot of groups this is some kind of if then else if this is successful then it stays with this otherwise the next will be executed etc etc now let's see how can we use it oh yeah this is um, we use header especially uh, in uh, importing uh, uh, data in not so well structured uh, files even text files and we also have the ability to do this in Colbert uh, Dayak uh, is just um, uh, a text file and uh, the name of the text file followed by text uh, opens the text file as a relation of lines and that's what we're using here this is a real life problem we, we had a file like this and it had started with the name then always with some pbs code with some additional things belonging to this pbs code another pbs code and here you see pbs one two three this one two three other uh, sub codes and this had to be normalized <coughs> and uh, access normalized i'll we'll comment later on that but now i'll show you uh, how you, what you can do with head up <coughs> um, here we ask for the line and then line make it the head up find the first space erase as many as you can call it a name so you get the name from it uh, or you can say next one uh, imagine i wanted from every line the second number so here's the line make it a headhog go to the first character in this range uh, move uh, if a character is in this range move it to the buffer do it as many times as you can and this group do it twice and exit with the buffer so here's every time the uh, here in this last column you can see the second number if it's available now the fun thing is that all these uh, parameters that you see here uh, that might be any parameter you like now we have in Colbert also a virtual table called uh, sequence sequence 3 or sequence 1 till 3 it's a virtual table with a line of numbers normally its ID is uh, can also add the name of the column so I can this example I join it with uh, so with sequence x 1 till 4 and then as I've now got an x parameter I can do it like this so it's a join from this direct text with the sequence one two I can add x2 
to P4, one to P4, and then like a first, second, third, etc., etc. Um, and of course, I can make it a pure or whatever I like. Um, a last one. This is uh, some printing uh, as a head of is a uh, tuple, uh, but depending on the context, it can also be of a boolean. And behind the where class, there's a boolean wanted. So then there's an implicit class to a boolean. This is a head of, and well, it's like uh, it's eating the first and the last character if it's the same, uh, and do it as many times as you can. So if the length is less than two, then it's an palindrome block. So here I ask for all the uh, elements in this table with the name is a palindrome, like Anna and Nicole. Mm -hmm. I think this is something you stumbled up quite a lot, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see this, uh, maybe you know why this language is called Haddock. Do you know uh, Tintin typeship? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> it looks like a curse. Yes, it looks like a curse. <laughs> Captain Haddock is a curse as a lot in <laughs> Okay, song is for Haddock. Uh, as I said, we it's nicely it's nice to use it in conjunction with a uh, normalize function we edit. Uh, normalize uh, with normalize you can uh, repeat it such as in text. Sorry. Normalize normalizes repeat searches. Normalize, we have a table called normalize and it's a virtual table. And it gets its data from some expression. Uh, so you can say normalize expression and then it normalizes the people by a space in the text. This must be a, a string expression. You can also say normalize this expression by a certain delimiter or from, or you can also normalize a lot of fields. Now, how does this work? Let's go to a normal demo. If I have a table like this, you see here a string field with um, yeah, some sports separated by a comma. If I say sports John normalize sport, normalize sport is a virtual table which has an expression sport, which is this field, and it normalizes based on the comma. Let's go back to our direct text. Um, I say normalize this line from PDS, meaning every PDS is a starting point for a, a subline. And this subline you see here, I normalize that again based on the space. So here I get all those sub items. This is not quite what I want because um, I want it really normalized so I add some extra information. This is the same situation, but now I say, okay, give me the line, and here we see find PDS, uh, arrange the rest with the name, get the subline, do something with it, that's my PDS code, etc., etc. So this is the normalized view, actually consisting of three tables, a join on three tables. Uh, taken from this direct text, I can add so clearly the line again. Uh, here you see this line is so, uh, decomposed in hand with this and etc. etc. You see also see it here missing. Missing is a nil, a special kind of nil. It's a nil caused by an auto join. It's still nil. You can you you can ask for it nil, and you can also discover. Well, this is just um, uh, a normal SQL statement, so you can make it a few and uh, ask for things like uh, where how it's called uh, previous uh, lights cafe. Etc. Okay, this is about Haddock. Okay, I've got some time, so let's go to another one. Um, teaching declaration. Uh, I go to former. We defined. Where's my former demo? 
Um, we defined a former expression and uh, former expression, this expression is taken from the previous records. And if it's the first record, then this will yield nil. I can also ask for a former without a parameter or a branch parameter. And then we mean the former failure of minefield. Okay. Now, what can I do with this? Uh, I have the I have the sales figures, so I can uh, make a list of revenue values. And now I can ask for give me the revenue and the revenue minus the former revenue. So this is thousand minus thousands, uh, even thousand minus thousands. So former minus former. I call it revenue growth. I can also do something like uh, the revenue plus the former revenue plus the former from the former of the revenue divided by three. So this is some running average. Um, I can also sorry, do something like, and here you see the other uh, manifestation of former. This is mean. So the cumulative revenue is the cumulative sum of revenue plus my former mm -hmm. and former I can also add uh, starting with thousand dot zero etc etc um, so former is a very simple building blocks which, which you can uh, define uh, any uh, uh, I would call analytic function like this one, and here, here are my sales figures. And if I want to see the grow in the revenue, uh, I must start again if there's a new employee, because I want to see the <coughs> grow in the revenue per employee. So I say if employee is the same as the former employee, then revenue will be the former revenue, otherwise nil. So I have a revenue grow per employee. And do you have the buy, the, the sales buy? Uh, employee ID in here, which is the sorting order where forms Yes, so. and I might not omit it. If I do this, then I say former function needs an order by, okay. because former only makes sense if there's an order. Mm -hmm. And now my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple building blocks, former and the former of former, and if they yield nil, then one. And this is Fibonacci from the sequence. And I like this because um, this is what I said in the beginning. If you have uh, you play around and some uh, and you cut to the essence of a problem, and you might you, you have this very small building blocks, and then I said let's try this one. And you see uh, that magic. That's fun. Mm -hmm. so, um, actually, I'm done. But I, I can tell if you like just quickly go back to function declaration. Um, the, our parser, uh, I, I think the heart of our program is our parser. We've got a very strong parser, and between there's also developing the parser, we saw you've got functions, you've got operators, and then you see it's quite similar. What's the difference? So, we just a function is just an operator uh, with special uh, priority acting on a tuple. Uh, but what's a tuple? There's a opening parentheses and closing parentheses. Can we make those opening and closing parentheses uh, actors too? And the comma in between. So we only have got actors and denotations in our parser. And our parser, because we also have to um, parse formulas, is some kind of probability parser. It, uh, without knowing the identifiers, it looks, it, it, it looks for any possible outcome of the parsing. So when defining functions, we, uh, I, when I have a, 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 all the databases, when I have to define function, I always have to look up how, 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 how do you do that? It's a very specific uh, uh, syntax. Um, so I wanted to make a very simple uh, implementation like this, create first a name and then an expression and just an expression as you normally use uh, for calculated fields or whatever. And when I was building this, I said, okay, you know, I have also to, I have to define the parameter types. Uh, but then I thought, well, why should I do it? It's turned out that I got my generic uh, definitions for free because the compiler already did that. 
So let's go back to Colbert and to open the action demo. Uh, this is the last one. <laughs> Have I got uh, a f here's my a table from? Uh, I can say override or create my function next as x plus one. Again, we don't know anything about x at this moment. And we see he says uh, generate function next successfully created three times. So I can use next here, next ID, next birthday, next salary. This is an int, this is a birthday, uh, sorry, yeah, it's the birthday, the date, and this is a salary. And here you see the next function. Now, you remember this one, the uh, uh, function where we had get uh, a number from a text uh, from a string. I can also say override function get number as line here here here. Um, the compiler tries to compile this and he knows well. Okay, line I don't know anything about that. These I recognize and here's an x I don't know anything about. So line and x must be parameters. And you can see this is a uh, strange example. He uh, generates uh, 15 uh, implementations of this. And I can use it like this uh, from the sequence table again, get line number. I can also say, uh, give me the diet text where, this is where, where get number line four. So give me the lines where there uh, are four uh, numbers in it. Is there more? Of course, I can add if I want uh, typing. I can overload it. Uh, I can use it like this. Um, I think that's it. I remember I forgot. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I forgot some examples of how you can use uh, formulas. You can um, imagine I have bias. We go back to the formula thing. One more minute. Imagine I've got bias. Bias are looking for second hand cars. And I also have a table with cars. So, how do I match these ones? Well, I just say bio out of cars on find. Um, imagine I've got a table, a huge population, uh, which I want to investigate, uh, maybe some uh, statistical analysis. Uh, I want to divide this population in cohorts. Uh, uh, sometimes I do it based on a field value, but sometimes I want to do it more specific, like this. If um, if my uh, element from my uh, population applies to this formula, then it belongs to this cohort. Well, you know, in the meantime, I can do fun out of from cohort from that. Um, now you see that some uh, elements of my uh, population uh, belong to uh, multiple cohorts. If that's what you want, it's fine. But in Colbert, you can also say, give me the first, and then again, first only makes sense if there's an order by rank. Uh, on that. So now everyone just belongs to one cohort. And you can see that some people do not belong to any cohort. Well, that's not a problem because um, I can add an extra, oh, I can add an extra uh, cohort with a very high rank, call it miscellaneous, and the formula is true. Now if I go back here, and then you see that everyone belongs to one cohort with the miscellaneous. So, thank you for listening. Uh, nice to be uh, here with you, Professor Ju, and I would really like to hear from you what you think of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Comments, questions? I have a question about the functions. Um, the way I understand it, you create basically all the possible functions 
uh, for all the possible types the variables can take, right? Yes. So if I do, say, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5, you get kind of a combinatorial explosion, no? Exactly. So what I would, uh, if I look at this, the way I would implement this is to actually not create anything at all at function creation time, but rather do the binding when you use the function in a query. Yeah. Because at that point, you know all the types. Exactly. And then you don't have to deal with this combinatorial explosion of the input parameters. Yeah. Because otherwise, I assume your program crashes if I use like 10 different columns in the fu function, yeah. right? No, I, look at, I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> On the other hand, um, uh, if I do uh, a, a, a plus a plus a plus a plus a plus, mm -hmm. Of course, the plus operator, mm -hmm. we can try it. Let, let's do it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, please. Um, <laughs> um, when there's a plus operator, mm -hmm. um, the function only gets the double part, because there's an mm -hmm. implicit uh, cast from input to doubles. Mm -hmm. And then plus only applies to a daytime plus an integer. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, then you can add other integers. Mm -hmm. So I think if you do uh, a plus a plus a plus a It will yeah. bind first it, to an I integer. I think you've got maybe, you know, if you've got five parameters, it's plus, I think you get maybe 10 or 15. Uh, okay, okay. No, 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 it's sure. you can use a cast and then everything yeah. can go in, right? I mean, if you use, if you can use an operator that can take any type and then you, well, there is null operator, for example, you know, that can take any type. No, there's not, no. No, yeah, I mean, a lot of operators are overloaded. Plus yeah. is overloaded yeah. for daytime, for integer, yeah. for boolean. Mm -hmm. but, uh, sorry, no, not for boolean, for integer, for a double. Mm -hmm. But as there is an implicit cast from integer to double, mm -hmm. it it uh, only uh, takes a double right. version. I, I would like to play with this a bit, but, <laughs> I, but I think I think that uh, this can be solved by basically deferring this until you actually use the function. Yeah, the exactly. That's yeah. my yeah. would be my intuition. I think it's more a need to do it that way, but. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of things I like to do. <laughs> no, no, of course, of course. Oh. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay, another question. Can you do subqueries? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, I will test that as well. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay let's, uh, let's have Mark some playtime yeah. later. Um, <laughs> other questions now? Yes, uh, so, so in, in the same context, but then for your um, formulas, uh, your, um, your formulas in your fields in your tables. Um, so you mentioned this two-step uh, type checking, the sanity check what's possible in the beginning and the actual type checking uh, once you um, know the binding. Um, so when is the function, how is it instantiated, how is the code generated, how is it evaluated? Okay. Uh, so yeah. do you kind of materialize this into whatever execution engine you have? Do you interpret that on the fly, the entire expression? Yeah, when you execute a query with, uh, and, and where you ask for the value of the formula field, then first time the uh, formula is uh, uh, accessed. At that time, uh, the binding is done, uh, and the binding is not done by some, um, it's, it's not a parameter list, of course, with, with actual, with formal parameters and actual parameters. The binding is done on, on name base. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's uh, compiled and binded once and stored in a cache. So the formula is afterwards again evaluated. Um, it, it gives already binds to a special fields where it, it gets its value from. So compiled as in bytecode? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. compiled in, yeah. So which languages go there if you want to check? C sharp. Yeah. My questions. Uh, does for the transaction management like start like Sorry, transaction, transaction management like start of the transaction commit? Do you also write the same? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. very low, very low. And there's some commit as you saw I did, but uh, there's no there are no real transaction commit. Oh, so because you do multiple updates and then commit this step, but no, it's not there. Okay. It's a lack of the code. So you can do one step at a time. Well, you can, can you do one step at a time? I can do one step at a time, yes. Okay. Uh, do you have insert compression for the data representation? Or? Sorry, my hearing is not. How, how is the, the, the storage of uh, your data? The storage. Is it compressive? 
Um, no, I've got multiple, uh, you can create multiple types of tables, uh, but basically these tables are just, uh, they're stored as strings, but you can also uh, store them as uh, their internal representation. So I've got multiple types of tables uh, where you can store them. And what, what is the internal representation? Is it a row-wise binary blob kind of, or? So, um, yeah, it's kind of blob with a, with a fixed length. Uh, if you would store it as a binary, uh, then the strings all have a fixed length. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's one big blob. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, uh, and, and there's also a way of storing it as a, uh, a text file. Mm -hmm. so I assume it's also not really made to handle like very big files. No. It's more like an Excel sort of data-esque. Right, well, like Excel saw this. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, maybe a bit bigger than Excel, like a hundred thousand rows or something. Like, like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's not meant to be like no, it's not meant to be, no. Okay. And and by something, the perfect example from the hospital, they mm -hmm. have hundreds of thousands of actions each day, five hundred thousand, and in, in about hundred formulas. And if you evaluate that, it's it, it took about four minutes on, on a regular desktop okay. to, uh, to to to. to so it's it's not built for uh, for, for looking for big data yeah, or something sure, sure. like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't go into uh, optimizing. Uh, no, like no, really. no, true. <coughs> it's, it's it's what we like here to optimize. Oh, yeah, things. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, but uh, of course it's a different use case and such. Yeah. So. Yeah. My questions. Yeah, more like a curiosity. Is that meant to be used with that particular interface, or you can use with? Meant to use with what? With what interface? With the one that we you showed us. Or is that with this interface? Yeah. Oh, oh um, yeah, at the moment you should use it like this interface. We're, build, we're busy building uh, ADO.NET, that's a C sharp version, so that you can access all the tables from all the database. And we also want to present it uh, by .NET or uh, any other protocol or whatever. But at the moment it's not in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? For now, Ben will also be here for a couple of uh, weeks more time. So, oh yeah. So, mm -hmm. if you, anybody wants to uh, have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session, then uh, please let me know. But otherwise, uh, I would say let's uh, thank you again. And yeah. Thank you.